In this video, I'm going to share with you the trends on marketing professional services in 2020. Let me use a slide share so we have some visuals along the way. Management consultants and coaches in particular um, will want to know about this and you might like to implement the techniques that I am going to share with you. But first of all, let me get started by introducing myself a little bit more in, in more detail. My name is Sigrid Akast. My business is Sticky Beak Marketing. I did start in business in 2002 with a jewelry business, which I purchased and I built it over about four years, purely using marketing techniques. I had no idea about jewelry when I entered that industry. I didn't even have pierced ears in those days. Marketing built that business two and a half times is what I got back for my investment. Then I saw an opportunity in Brisbane here for Brisbane Office Supplies, jumped at it, purchased that business. And again, an industry I had never worked in before. I didn't know anything about, but products, pens and pencils are not that hard to get to know. Marketing takes a lot more. In this particular business, two years later, I sold it for five times what I purchased it for. So really great opportunities for me to use marketing in the way I know it, in the way I have studied it. And so here today I am, Sticky Beak Marketing. I started in 2010 and I have been servicing all different industries and professionals since then, helping them to bring marketing closer to their own understanding and helping them to build their businesses using marketing techniques. For this video today, I have already used the techniques currently um, in the market for oh, about 18 months or so. And it was really interesting, exact, uh, actually quite um, really interesting in a fun way to find these particular large and well-known marketing um, companies to put out a number of reports. Salesforce came out with a state of marketing report. Now they used about 4,000 professional marketers and conducted a survey and that was right across the globe. So it wasn't just in one particular country, or a small um, segment of the market. It was 4,000 across the globe, how they put together the, the, uh, this particular report. Now that report, as well as the professional services high growth study conducted by uh, marketing and research uh, company Hinge Research, and also HubSpot, a software company, putting out content marketing, helping you with inbound content marketing in particular. They put out the Artificial Intelligence in Marketing 2020 Predictions Report. So all of those three have been finding in those reports from the surveys they did from the people they questions in the marketing industry, they've done what I've done and discovered like me, how well, these techniques and these directions help you grow your business. These are the five, in particular, five areas that they found are the most powerful ones to help you that you need to know about. Digital marketing with artificial intelligence is really transforming marketing. It's been around for a while. Of course, you know about all the social media platforms are using artificial intelligence. It's those algorithms in the background that are collecting and information about us that are mapping our profiles in detail and that they are coming up with the consumer behavior that we display. They are predicting that and in accordance with that, they then make offers, they change the platforms, they add or take away certain features and functions. So for us in marketing, for you and for me in marketing, it's really relevant to know that 
with the introduction of AI by those companies, and of course also in the larger companies, they're already using this at a very high price in the market. It's now come down for us to be affordable in a variety of different systems and programs, software and platforms. So digital marketing is the direction using artificial intelligence to map your customer profiles to predict, monitor and predict your client's behavior. Point number two that's come across is the specialization and targeting, how important that is in marketing. And this is a very interesting point because just recently I did a presentation to a variety of industries. It was a workshop actually. We had industries in the room such as um, security company, we had IT company, we had uh, bookkeepers and aged care. So a, a real vast array of different industries. And every single one of those business owners was saying, no, I'm not specializing. I don't want to miss out on customers. This is the big fear of so many in business, including coaches and consultants. I don't want to miss out on all of the customers, on all of the clients that possibly would come to me that I know I definitely could work with. Here is the point. When you show off one expertise and you become the one expert in one area of what you do, you are setting yourself apart on a level where you are immediately as the expert are given authority. People expect that you know much more than just your expertise. They will come to you and ask you, do you also do this or can you recommend somebody? So when that happens, of course, if you do it, you bring them in as clients but they recognize you as the expert and authority in that field. Therefore, you're standing above the crowd. They will also accept your fees being possibly higher than the rest of the market because you're an expert. After all, experts have done a lot more work and a lot more training and no more so they can ask for more. Specialization and targeting is really important in the current market also because the market is so busy. Consumers are bombarded with information on all the different platforms. Just think about everybody carries their phone almost 24 hours a day with them and they are constantly scrolling through getting new information on all sorts of topics. Now, if the topic is in direct relation to what they are looking for, to who they are, to what is right for them, they will stop scrolling and you have their attention. But if you are generalized, one of many, that will not happen. So really let that sink in for yourself, how important specialization and targeting is in the current market moving forward. Point number three that comes across really strong is social media networks. Of course, they want to keep us on their network. They want us to interact and connect with others on their platform. Why? Because that is how they profile us. That is how they watch our behavior and how they can predict, predict behavior in the future, how we might behave. That is how they can then create new features for their platforms. That is how they can charge businesses to advertise on the platform. So keeping us on the social media platform is very, very important for that platform. But for you and I, it is really important to get the contacts off that platform. You want to have your contacts off into your own email nurture list. You want to market to them in a way that is appropriate for you, your business, and your clients, not the social media network. 
Now, let me share with you, there are a number of programs, a number of software programs, particularly if you are on LinkedIn, you might have been approached to say, we have this really fantastic way of taking the contacts off LinkedIn for you and you have them in this great program and you have all this information and the data and you can check it and you can nurture them. Be aware that social media programs, platforms, and in particular LinkedIn, they are not keen on those programs. They are watching them very closely. Some have already been banned. I'm not saying they will ban them all. I'm saying to be aware, those automated programs to take the contacts off in the way that they do is not necessarily the best way. To take them off is possibly better on an individual basis because then you are really getting those people that are interested and already connected with you and interacting with you. But make sure that you keep this in mind. You want to bring contacts from social media across to your own email marketing list. Point number four is multi-channel marketing mix. You may have heard this in the past, you are probably very familiar with that term. What that means is you want to be on more channels than just, let's say, LinkedIn. You want to be visible elsewhere as well. It is very important because we have got such a busy environment out there. And your marketing mix, how you market, depends, again, very much on you and the business that you have. So one size does not fit all. You need to consider where you need to be visible and where you want to and need to interact with people particularly that are prospects and future clients for you. Really important to not just be on one particular platform in one particular area. You want to have a multitude of channels that you are available out there on. And number five, with all these different activities and ways and things I've talked about already so far, systemizing what you do and integrating a range of tools, they work well together so you can automate the whole process of marketing. You want to create consistency in your marketing. Posting one day and then not for three or for three months, writing a, uh, an article or a blog post once and then not for three months, that just does not give you visibility. And it also does not look good when somebody is checking you out online when you have got their articles from 2015. Nothing updated. It's really not a good look. So these are the five major points that those three marketing reports highlight and that I know are really valuable and help grow your business because I've already used them with my own clients over at least the last 18 months. The artificial intelligence I have been using since November last year when I discovered a new system. It's a really powerful, very interesting and completely automated system. Now the digital transformation with the artificial intelligence, as I already, already said, it is coming into the market affordable for all of us. So just to recap in today's market, this picture shows you a smidgen of what's happening out there and what information platforms and software is bombarding all of us, including our prospects and potential clients. The key for us is to attract them to get that attraction in some form right to our prospects and then holding their attention attracting the attention and then holding the attention that's the two key factors with marketing in this really busy digital artificial driven um, marketing world here I'm sharing with you a foundation a strategy. 
The elements that I'll discuss here with you in some detail are all important elements. They may not fit into your business exactly how I describe them here now, but you will want to have the elements perhaps in a different way, in a different order, in different form for your business. They are important so that you can meet the five points that I have just discussed with you a moment ago. This is the fundamental strategy, the components you need for marketing in 2020, your professional services, yourself. And even if you are an employee at this point in time, you want to consider how these foundation components fit into you being found and being looked at by potential future employers. The first thing is to grab attention. You've got to grab that attention initially, and this needs to be something where you are focusing on an element in a specialized area with a particular segment of the market, and you give them something, you share something with them that they are desperately looking for, that really pricks up their ears and wants them to know more about. That gives you then the opportunity to capture their details, to bring them in to you directly. Now this must be in direct relation to that attention that got their attention. Capture their details and give them something that you have talked about here or maybe offered them. When you get that attention here and you are capturing their details, their name and email perhaps, perhaps more. It depends on what it is that you offer and it depends on who you are and what your business is. In most cases, name and email are the initial capture details that you want to make sure you get. Now, once they click through and sign, sign up and click through, you should have a landing page where they land on. That's a landing page. They land on that next page. And that page wants to say something, again, in relation to what you've just offered them to give them. So that landing page can have many different formats. It might already have on there what you just promised and some additional information, perhaps an invitation to meet with you or to come to a webinar, or perhaps it's already a full on sales page on there. So that depends very much on who you are, what you offer. The list nurture is, of course, part of this whole step by step by step. Now, the important component here in the list nurture is that you must nurture your contacts on your list, whether that is with email, text messaging, or videos, whatever way, phone calls, you connect with them and nurture them. You speak to them, you write to them, as if they sit directly across the table from you. Make it comfortably personalized, professional, but let them get the feel you really are talking to them directly, not to a whole group of people. Don't let it go past their attention. Grab it by speaking to them directly. Let me give you two examples here on this component on this set of components, the foundation strategy. I was working with a business coach who was targeting business coaches who want to expand their business and bring in higher value clients. He was really um, not getting the attention. We focused very much on this particular segment that he wanted and we created attention grabbing material from going layer by layer down, asking him and for him considering what are the questions that my current clients and prospects ask me most often? What is it that they don't know? When I am out there in groups, what sort of questions constantly come up from this target group that I know, I know how to answer that, that would interest them? He created a, um, a simple five video series of answering those particular questions in five videos. 
created the capture page for him in the capture process. We sent that out and within two hours, he had 56 signups of business coaches that wanted to have access to this five, ser five video series of answering the questions that they had. 56, it was really great. Now the landing page, the page that popped up once they signed up, said to them something like, well, really great to see you here. You're obviously really keen to get these questions answered. If you are, if this is really urgent for you, I will make my time available. Click this link and book a time with me directly. I do whatever amount of time, one-on-one. -on -one. Four people did that. Four people took that up on the first day. Expanded afterwards. He did get those, out of those four people, he made two clients. He signed them up as clients straight away. So it was a really great success for him. Those that were not ready for, for, uh, to come on board as a client with him, he put them on his list and nurtured them. And of course, he made sure that the whole nurture process was absolutely, whoops, sorry, was absolutely personalized so that they were able to feel he was really speaking to them. A little uh, slightly different scenario here with a different client who has been working for over 10 years as a consultant to really large companies such as um, Shell and BP and um, big uh, contractors uh, with, uh, with government departments as well. He goes in and he works on leadership, building leadership qualities into the teams of these large companies and various departments. For him himself, the frustration was that the process of bringing a company actually on board to the, to the moment of signing up with him could take anywhere from six to 12 months because they had so many questions and of course it went to a variety of departments and so on. We identified that those questions were probably the most time consuming component that they were asking the same question over and over that sometimes they'd send an email and then they wouldn't you know, send it for two weeks and then they'd send an email and ask the same question again. So we identified that for him, a really great way to automate this process would be to speed it also up. Yes, he did also create an attention capturing and lead capturing component to those clients that are out there generally in social media. And he used a feature of his leadership building component for that as a video to bring people in. But for those large companies that he wants to work with and cut that process down, that time that it takes, we created all the material that is required that they ask for in those companies. And substantiating reports and details, we put all of that into a digital format. And when somebody came on and asked him questions, he would refer them to the digital platform to get not only drip feed emails with this information, but also access to a whole range of videos so that they could look at those, watch those over and over until they were ready. So it took out that time of him having to physically get all of that done. He actually cut down from that six to 12 months with the number of those he had on the go to just three months and having contracts assigned going in and doing his work. So really important to work out what exactly it is that will work for you and how you can fit these components into your marketing. Now the automation and that artificial intelligence are the two top components, the two top areas for all of our marketing to consider from now on. Artificial intelligence on its lowest level, but on that level that we can really make use of and 
that helps us to cut down time is to predict what content will be successful. What content do our prospects want to see and read and look at? Artificial intelligence can help crafting and suggesting better content and help creating content faster. It can also help seek out content, curated content that we can use for a speedy delivery of a variety of topics ongoing consistently without having to create it all ourselves. So using automation and artificial intelligence are two really key components of marketing moving forward. I've got a 10 step guide for you. These are just the icons for it. I'm not going to leave you with just the pictures here to come up with your own ideas. So let's take a look at the 10 step guide. Really important and you know, surprisingly little done is to defining a very clear marketing goal. What is it you want to achieve in the first place? Because what you want to achieve will determine what techniques, what tools and what platforms you need to be on and you need to use. Without knowing what your goal is, by saying, well, I just want to increase my, let's say, likes on, if you're on Facebook, for example, you know, if I have a thousand likes, I'm going to get better visibility. That's not really a great goal because even though you might be getting more visibility, it's not going to help you bring the clients on board. So be clear on what that goal is. Really dig down, take the layers away to finding a worthwhile goal. Consider your authority status. The expert is always looked up to. It is accepted to pay what they ask for. And specialization helps you still getting others that are not in that particular special niche that you might choose, are, they still come on board to you. Authority status, a really fantastic tool to gain that quickly, is writing a book. I am the author of three actually number one bestsellers on Amazon. I've written three books, three different niches, three different areas I have built parts of my business in using a book as the authority tool. Step number uh, uh, three is creating a signature tool. Now I've shared with you on two coaches that I want to, um, that, that I, um, I, we've used video. So we've used the process of answering questions that the prospects have in videos. Video is a fantastic, powerful tool to use because you're bringing your personality across. People get to know you really well, much better as if it's just a written report. You can still do reports and checklists and so on in certain ways, but a video is a great one to be your signature tool. You can put everything in there and put your personality in there really well. The multi-channel visibility approach is a step, I'll put it here as step number four. Consider that how many channels should you be on in particular to be visible, to get that really powerful visibility. Step five is to make sure you have a coherent and consistent approach to all of your marketing. You cannot stop and start. I was working with a client she was uh, coaching women in particular around mindset. We started on one particular direction that she wanted to niche into. Halfway through the work, she changed that direction to something else. Six months later, she changed again to targeting a different target market with her mindset direction. Now, she said to me, oh, well, look, you know what, I, I'm, I'm just not going to continue. None of this is working. I pointed out to her that it is working. 
Each one is working, but you have not coherently and consistently applied it. It is in the finer detail and it is in applying it constantly. It doesn't happen overnight necessarily. It did with a coach. But not all the time in what she wanted, it was quite different to bringing people on her list. She wanted to straight away make sales. So changing what you're doing frequently may not be the way to get the outcome that you're seeking. So consider the coherent and consistent approach and also for everything that you do. Processes and systems to organize that entire marketing flow will help you put that consistent approach in place really well. Now, networking, being out there visibly, physically is a great way. Networking online works as well, really well. You need to just have a look at what the best components for you are. Direct connect with people. That could be via phone and that can be on social media. Don't just rely on posts and articles, but direct connect with people as well. Make it a habit of maybe three connections a day. Speaking opportunities are a great part of your overall marketing. It is not for everybody, but it is a powerful way, particularly when you're using somebody else's audience. Somebody is already bringing people together. So getting that event up and running is, does not have to be your work. However, when you are using online speaking, then you can create your own presentations and webinars with audiences that you attract. And lastly, look at using tools, the latest marketing tools that automate and are powered by artificial intelligence. That is the way to go into the future and it'll really work for you very well to get to know it and to use it in your business. So that is my approach, the 10 steps, the five important areas, they are going to work and really help you build your business, grow your business, whatever area you're in, you just need to make sure you're personalizing it for what you want to achieve and, and doing, achieve and, and doing that with a very clear goal. Uh, if you'd like to connect with me directly, simply contact me. We'll set a time and we'll have a look at what it is that you specifically might want to put in place that you haven't got just yet. Secret of Cast, Sticky Beak Marketing. <laughs>